ladies and gentlemen, Merry Christmas, one and all. Cliff Richard returns. Uh, now, I, I'm surprised to find you here, because we were just talking during the record, you were talking about Barbados. Yeah. I always saw you, Barbados, Christmas. Well, I, well no, it, I have been in Barbados for Christmas, but the first year that I had almost put me off, because uh, the tree was quite tall, we have quite high ceilings. It took me about four hours to put it up, and I had three showers because <laughs> it was so hot. I was sweating all over the place. And the only strange thing is whether you're in this year. I've been invited to Lauderdale, and of course, even that's a warm, hot place. Yes. So when when I'm dreaming of a white Christmas comes on, you think huh, never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you are going full Christmas this year. It's the return of uh, Cliff of Christmas. This is called uh, Christmas with Cliff. It was released uh, at the end of last month, and it is. Almost 20 years since your last Yeah, Christmas. they said 19 years since the last one, and I, it didn't cross my mind to do one, actually, because um, I just never thought about it. I've done it. And then the record company said, we'd like to do a Christmas album with you, and they reminded me how long ago it was, the first one. So I said, OK, and they sent me a list. I don't know... Graham, I didn't realise they sent me a list of about 150-odd songs. I didn't know there were that many classic old Christmas songs. So I scratched out the ones that I'd already done and then picked out ten from the ones that I'd like to do. And I asked them, I said, can I, if I can look for some new stuff as well? They said, if you find anything new, send it. So I sent them three songs and they liked them all three, so they're on the album. So it's a mixture of stuff. And I don't know if you've heard the album yet, you may not have at time, but I got two producers. One is a rock and roller guy, one of the other, one of the other guys is a German, uh, and he and his, they all both, they both live in L.A., so they know about L.A. sounds, and I just said, I heard a lot of Christmas albums, and like, I, did you hear the Michael Bublé album? Oh, yeah. I shouldn't well, be yeah. talking about my... <laughs> yeah, no, no, my, I don't, no. yeah, yeah. But it's he's, a fan, he's your competition. <laughs> it's a fantastic album. I mean, it's, it's, and I, well, I've always loved his voice. I tried to get a duet to sing with him this year, but he was not available. He was on tour. So I'm, I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to say, I've recorded with Michael Bublé. Yeah. But anyway, even Michael's, his, it's the most fantastic, cla jazzy version of those songs. And I said to my guys, look, I just want to be taken back a bit. I want as many ding dong chong kong. <laughs> They've got reindeer hoofs on one of the songs. So I felt that my my record is slightly more Christmassy than everybody else's. But it's nice to be there. I, but, but, because, but because you've had so much success with Christmas songs, you've had Mistletoe and Wine, Saviour's Day, Millennium Prayer, do people offer you Christmas songs all the time? No, they don't actually. No, I mean this year because it was mentioned and uh, and uh, somehow. In fact, a good friend of mine wrote the very last song on the album, which is called Six Days After Christmas, which is six days after Christmas, we let the new year in. So it's not a Christmas song. It's actually a welcome to the new year. But I th And the guy, the people at Warner Music said, I think that's great. That'll be a fabulous last song on the, th on the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was just a matter of doing that, really, and trying to get it all out and about. And am I right in thinking you recorded it in Miami? I did. The uh, the tracks that uh, I sang to were recorded in L.A. Um, the the guy, the German guy who does the more gentler pop, um, uh, he got from Budapest, I think, a choir from Budapest. Wow. There's f six, four girls in L.A., which they double track, so there was like eight of them doing their thing. There was a black choir. So it's a very diverse type of album, and I'm so, I'm so really happy with it. I could live with that for a long time, yeah. another 19 years. And it must have been nice to get back in the studio. Well, I get into the studios quite regularly. I had an album last year out, um, and then... Because uh, I, I record almost every couple of years. Yeah. So I'm, and it's, it's my favourite thing. If I, could, if I could be in the studio every single day, I would be. And were you able to record during uh, all the lockdown and all that sort of stuff? Uh, no, because I was trapped. I say trapped. I was locked down in Barbados f from for nearly, you. <laughs> yeah, for nearly eighteen months. And uh, as soon as I got out, that the last album that I did, um, I I did in Miami, and it was just a matter. I got I got out to Florida, had my injections and everything, and then spent a week in the studio. And it doesn't take me that long. I think it's much harder for the producers to get what the artist wants yeah. and what they want to do with it, then go and record all the instruments and stuff like that. It comes to me, and honestly, I can do probably three tracks in a day because once you've learnt the songs and you've, you've figured out how to do it, 
then it's it's fairly easy for me. It's not a difficult thing for me, and I love it. I love doing it. It's, it still gives me a kick. You know, you've got the headphones on and you sing, then you say, okay, can I hear it? And you hear it and you think, is that me? Hard to relate to the fact that your voice can be taken on that thing and, and come back at you, and particularly when you have it mixed and you, yeah. you've got a little bit of echo here. It, it's, it's, it's just so much fun for me. I love it. Well, pin your ears back because you're going to hear yourself again. Uh, this is Jingle Bell Rock off the, the new album. Anything you want to tell us about Jingle Bell Rock before we hear it? Well, only, only that Jingle Bell Rock and along with uh, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, I can remember the tracks from way back. I remember Brenda Lee singing Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. And uh, it, I chose it because I thought Jingle Bell Rock, it's just so Christmassy sounding and it brings rock and roll into it, which is what I've always been. Here it is. Okay. Jingle Bell Rock off his new album Christmas with Cliff. Uh, you can get that digitally on CD, special red vinyl, and if you've got a special Cliff Richard fan in your life, there's a limited run of white vinyl uh, exclusive to Amazon. Um, now, to me, and I also, I did like that you sampled your own song in the middle of there. <laughs> a little bit of We Don't Talk Anymore. Yeah, that, that, that was the rocker guy, Sam Hollander, and he said, do you mind if I use a bit of, from your past? In fact, he only used two bits. And the sleigh ride one goes... As, just just before I come in, it goes da 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 da. da, da. You, everybody's going to expect congratulations. It's not. It's let's take a sleigh ride. So it, it was it was quite interesting, and and they they gave me what I asked for, and then sometimes it you can't really get across what you really want, but these guys were fantastic. Yeah. And in the end, I, I was writing out about my album, and in the end, I had to say, this is not my album. This belongs to all of us <laughs> yeah, who yeah, played, yeah. sang, produced it. It was our album. And I'm listening to that, and your voice still has, you know, it's got all the Cliff Richard qualities. It's got <laughs> that tang, the smooth, it's beautiful. And do you, has your voice changed over the years? Can you hear it? Because I can't. No, I can, I can hear it. Particularly, I'm trying to I'm trying to talk the record company into making the cheapest album ever. Stuff I've already recorded before, but no one really has heard. It's been lost on some albums. You know, most albums have maybe two or three singles. Everybody hears that, and they don't realise how rock and roll I was. And my voice was much higher and more gravelly. And so when I and I'm thinking, I'd like to I want to call it a soul set free. Ooh. Because I, I did, uh, what's that show? Uh, uh, Desert Island Discs. Oh, yes. And the last song I chose was by Joe Bonamassa, which goes, I want her everywhere. And I said, I'm going to be remembered, I will, and I don't mind, Living Dolls, Summer Holiday, all that sort of stuff. And I, I've loved it, and they've been huge hits for me. But the stuff I like best are these other rock and roll things where my voice goes, wow, and I can growl and everything. But I won't be remembered for those unless I can talk the record company into re-releasing. <laughs> <laughs> and you might be you might be singing some of them because you are on tour next year, the Blue Sapphire tour. Uh, it's, it's kind of this time next year, isn't it? Uh, yes, it'll be end of October, beginning of November. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, because of the Christmas album, I could I didn't want to go on tour to this year because obviously no one would have heard it fully. So I thought let's do something next year, and I tried. I wanted to get a, a couple of weeks at the Albert Hall and do a full Christmas show. I didn't realise. My manager said, "Don't hold your breath. You're not going to get it. You left it too late." He said, "Sometimes we book the Albert Hall five years ahead." Wow. And he said, usually, in your case, we, are, we book it two years ahead. So I blew it this year. So in the end, I'm doing six in London, I think the Apollo. Yeah, the event of Apollo, which yeah. is, yeah. And then, and then one in Glasgow, one in Blackpool. So it's a short little tour, and at least I'll be able to get to the fans, some of them anyway. No, because, I mean, that is, it must be so gratifying for you, you know, after this extraordinary career, that those fans have just never left your side. No, they haven't. And the thing is, of course, if, if I had more radio play, thank you, by the way, for having me on and playing yeah, something. See? But it's <laughs> difficult, much more difficult now for those of us who are over the age of, you know, 35. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm 40, <laughs> it's just difficult to get the young, get to the younger folk, 
and a, a lot of radio stations aim at the younger people, but they forget that we older folks did it first. We used the same instruments, we used the same producers, we used the same studios, and there should be no difference. Just let us compete. Yeah. Uh, which is, we've lost that a little bit. And also older folk buy records and older folk go to concerts and they go to shows. Well, they do actually, and of course records don't sell anymore as what, the way they used to. I mean, I've sold close to 300 million records. I don't know that anybody can do that, in spite of the fact, when you hear some of these guys and gals that win a competition, they are damn good. Yeah. I mean, they are better than we were, the Shadows and I, when we started, because we didn't really know how to do it. We just heard Elvis and Little Richard and Buddy Holly, and we were soaked in that music and then found our way through it, but it took us a while. Whereas nowadays, these young kids are really good singers, and I, I always wish somehow or another that the, that the sale of records would shoot up. I'd rather have a record than an MP3. To, to, you yeah. know. It's a much better quality anyway, a CD. Well, the, the lucky thing, and also you're embracing it with your red vinyl and your white vinyl. I mean, vinyl is sort of coming back. Well, it is, but you know, when they say, well, they've had four million sales, I'm thinking, but there's seven billion people on the planet. It doesn't, it's a drop in the ocean. But And also, what was good? You, well, you, I don't know what... No, I'm not going to ask you how old you are. I'm very But old. I'm sure you do remember the 12-inch vinyl albums. Yes, I do. <laughs> it was so fabulous to join with the designers to talk about what the sle sleeve should look like. And then when they get... What do they call it? Gatefold? You oh, can yes. have a huge picture on the inside. Nowadays, the CD, they really only want your face on the front. And it's, that's about all you can get on the front. And, and talking of face, you've got a, uh, a, a new calendar out this year, right? A, a what? A calendar out this year. Yes, I have. I yes. said I've, I've got one ready for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can get them at cliffrichard.org. Cliffrichard.org. You can get tickets for the tour next year. And you can get the calendar. I look forward to that. Spending a whole year with you, Cliff. Uh, thank you so much for coming in to see us. Oh, listen, Greg, that's terrific. I've, I've always liked talking to you. Will you be doing much more TV? I hope so. I mean, that yeah, that's TV's decision. <laughs> well, just remember that if you get to do TV, I am available, but I'm, but I'm not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever called you that, Cliff. No one ever called you that. Uh, Christmas the Cliff is out now, and the single is Heart of Christmas. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you. And the same to you. And a Happy New Year. Fabulous oh, New Year. Thank you very much. God bless. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.